So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Leonardo Segovia. I'm speaking to you from Argentina. As Adam said, I usually go by the nickname Amy Spark. I'm in Amy Spark on GitHub. And today I'll be talking about integrating Hollywood open source with KDE applications. And this talk will be a bit on the long side, so please ask any questions in the chat and I'll answer them at the end of the, this talk. So for a bit of background, who I am. I've been studying for the Master's in Computer Science since 2017 at the Universidad Nacional del Sur in Bahia Blanca in Argentina. My thesis is in modeling animation and rendering of hair and food in feature animation. I got my bachelor's in computer science the previous year from the same university. My thesis was in real-time pollution handling and deformation. I got involved in, in open source in 2016 with Krita. This was because David Revoy, who is the author of Pepper and Carrot, a webcomic, invited me to the, contribute to the Krita painting suite. And that kind of snowballed from there. Uh, I participated with the Homebrew project between 2017 and 2020, maintaining mainly the CAS project. And I participated in Google Summer of Code 2018, implementing Zootopia a hair shader for Blender. In, the, uh, in this application, it is named Principal Hair Shader. And my latest participation was in season of KDE 2019 fixing data support from 14 color 14 point color based operations so well what will this talk be about uh, this talk is meant to share with you the experiences of working in my gstock 2020 project during the past four months i work on integrating an open source library from this animation called cxpro which lets us render dynamic textures in Grita like the ones shown in the right. There will be an additional talk in the student showcase next week in which I'll share some, some details on the Grita side of things. This talk it will only cover CXPR and its technical aspects. The key take that I wanted to take it from this talk is that code which is production proven, especially by a big content company like Disney, is not necessarily cross-platform like we would expect for usage here at KDE. Throughout this talk, I want to show you a selection of pitfalls that exist in the original CX code and how these were improved in version that is currently integrated within Krita. This is meant to show you where this kind of code, I mean open source, production proven, authored by big companies, can break and why that could happen. So in the next if a few minutes I go over four key aspects of the CXPO. The first is assumption that it makes us to the underlying platform. The second is bloat or extra stuff. The third is interna internationalization efforts. And the fourth point is theming. And I close off summer with a summary of my efforts throughout the project. So, the first objective of this talk is called platform, ad platform assumptions. By platform assumptions, I mean the fact that this kind of code runs in common platforms. This means a software configuration that is known and reproducible. For instance, each year, a committee led by the Visual Effects Society Technology Committee releases a version of what is called the BFX reference platform. This is a specification that sets such a version of components like a compiler, libraries, and SDK versions. However, we use of KDE applications run them on just any platform that you can imagine. This is just an example. The localization teams translate application into 70 languages and counting. KDE plat uh, frameworks runs on, on almost all of the desktop and mobile uh, operating systems on the face of the earth. Neon, the distribution of KDE, supports two architectures in 64 bits, AMD and ARM. Ubuntu, the upstream distribution, supports not only 64 bits, but also XFTG, ARM, PowerPC, et cetera, et cetera. And this code example doesn't even cover all the possible library versions. For instance, Qt5, 
detergent sets, John sets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the key question for working with Zephyr is: Does it work in all of these possible configurations? The answer is no. This needs to work as it was released. It's neither platform not, nor architecture independent. To begin with, there is a platform.h header where they attempt to punch meeting defines platform specific classic like timers and spin locks. But this header assumes that running under Windows means instantly that you are using the Visual C compiler and thus tries to link against the Windows SDK and Visual C specific libraries. This should not happen. For instance, Krita in Windows doesn't use Visual C++, but uses Mingu. So it should be able to detect GCC and instead use APIs which are based on Unix. The second point is that CFPR, if enabled, uses SSC4 instructions, which is an extension to the X86 instruction set. These instructions are statically compiled, which means that they are supported by only 98% of the hardware server sample according to Steam at, uh, as of July 2020. This means that the remaining 2%, which uh, are, are usually people with other hardware for, that for some reason cannot, re cannot run SSD4, will break that instantly the, the data for these users. As I said before, they are specified at compiling time with a, with a switch flag, which means that if enabled, they will not compile on non intent platform for obvious reasons. The worst thing of all this, it, it, is, it is only used in a single function, which is round, uh, round from floating point numbers. So this platform header was easily dealt with. It just it was a matter of factoring operating system specific items into our own CTP files. I only left uh, opaque types and includes in platform.h. And as for SSE4, for the purposes of JSOC, I left it alone. This is what hidden behind a CMake flag. I'll show you later if there is more to do about it. Going back to our example, I mentioned that KDE supports more than 70 languages. However, this needs work does not because it is not locally independent. The definition of locally independent is given in the C++ reference, which says that locally is a set of features that are culture specific, which can be used by programs to be more portable internationally. This in short means among other facets, number formatting, currency symbols, so separator and decimal point. Decimal point is key here because there is quite a big bug. And to explain it, we need to jump directly into the, what I call the inerts of CXPR. So uh, Disney CXPR as a work of computer programming is actually two libraries in one. The first, it's a language parser, which is based on Genius General Purpose Parser Generator, which is called Bison, and the Lexical Analyzer Flex. And the second is a UI toolkit based on Qt, pure Qt. Why is locale decimal point so important here? Because we have a question. Once an expression is parsed, how does this library figure out the value of the number terminals? This is performed in two, in, in two separate ways. The first one, then the, num the number terminals are directly parsed with a, fun with a, sorry, with a C standard function called ATOF. And the second one is done, done in the UI library. Comments are parsed, use, uh, use a function called sscanner. These comments are used to, by the UI to tell uh, what, uh, what range uh, does a uh, uh, variable have. The key take here is that both of these functions rely on the current locale of the application. So the C17 standard in this section 7.11.1.1 
says that the default is allocated called C. But in, in applications that support different cultures like Krita, this may not be the case. For instance, if you call set locale with the variable LC in America, or you set LC all in your research profile, this may not be this may not be true. Here I put you a li very little example. You define a variable called channel. You give it a value 0.5 or a half, and you say for the UI that the value range is between zero, uh, zero inclusive to 0 0.5 inclusive. So in light of how uh, CX proposes this, what may be the end result? The answer is it depends on the operating system. On the left, you've got macOS. When you launch an application by double clicking it, it starts with a clean, a clean environment. Unless the developer or the user does something weird with the startup, it has a clean locale and you get expected results. On the right, you have Linux. In Linux, since all applications inherit the C locale from their parent, which in turn is the related from the user profile, stuff happens. The example in the right was, got, uh, was gotten with the locale set to Spanish of Spain. The key take here is that the parser is incorrectly locale dependent when it parses its own language syntax. So, fixing, the, fixing this issue ma means, means sorry, making the parser locale agnostic, which is not easy because the, the, the C standard provides no standard way yet. ESD and Windows have uh, underscore L versions of these functions, eight of SF, STR, TOD, et cetera, et cetera. Linux, and by Linux mean both the CNU, uh, GNU, C library as well as muscle, do not provide any of these functions. We've got an excellent alternative to replace this, uh, which is called ST, STD from CARS in the, in the CARCOM header from C17. However, Krita's baseline is C11, not 17. And there is a cross platform replacement called SCNLib from NVS Cosmos and on GitHub, which works on C11. But however, its local support is just a placeholder. It doesn't have any local support working at, at present. So for the purpose of JSOC, I elected to replace ATOF with a function called click, crack ATOF from TMBO. And as a scanner was simply work around by setting and resetting the local before and after each call. This was, this is just the first objective of our task, so we we'll move to the next, which I called bloat. What is meant by bloat in this context? I mean, literally anything that a host application like Rita doesn't need to use or know in order to embed the export. This, me this means unused and unnecessary features, for instance, code that is isn't used anywhere, which it appears for, to be for Disney internal tools, as well as a plugin system. I also mean in large headers, for instance, multiple classes per header, as well as not repeating the header and CPP uh, code separation. There is more in the next slide. By bloat, I also mean QT4 support. This is not, not only a problem because it has been unsupported in Android Live since then at least 2015, but because it prevents standing of breaks, as we'll see more later. And it also brings deprecated dependencies like QOpenGL. There are also needed, needed upgrades like uh, find programs for Bison and Flex, where you can just find package, which was the initial intention of this name, but it was never upgraded. And there is a big need to not is blindly install everything, everything at the kitchen sink, which has copying and pasting every header to usr include. 
and there are no requirements declared. So there is literally no way for you as a developer to know what your application will need to link against at trying time. There is a last one, which I call my favorite because it was, it cost me a big, a big headache, is that Mac OS and Windows need pre-generated parcel files because neither of them bundle Python or Flex by default. But the current tool chain, as it was shipped by Disney, needs the user to manually copy these files to the build direction, which should be done automatically. As I said before, uh, like the platform pitfall that we saw in the previous section, this can be solved in conceptually simple ways. To begin with, we wall off Unis features by putting them behind CMake flags. This was the case of Unis, Unis Disney internal widgets like Deepwater and Incurve and an entry point called Expert Main. And the open the OpenGL based widgets I put behind us another flag which is called Enable OpenGL Dialogues. This point incidentally help us get rid of the deprecated linkage, which is excellent for building with Qt5. Secondly, and to aid in, and to aid in the above, I refactor widgets as much as possible to split them into header and implementation files. And finally, I ported the destination tab to CMake imported targets which means that CFO features are now explicitly selectable through the wall of that I described earlier. Everything is, can now be target linked in the host application, which means that you no longer have to worry about uh, what targets we need to link against. This is the end of the second objective. We move now to the Third one, internationalization, which is one of the most important features of open source. What is formally internationalization? The World Wide Web Consortium call it, and I summarize, the design and development of an application that enables easy localization for target audiences that vary in culture, region, or language. CXPR is a new surfacing library through its UI toolkit, so it should be able to support localization when reporting its results. This means, as I said, displaying error messages and UI text. Let's recall again from the first section. CXPR is conceptually two different libraries, a language parser and a UI toolkit. Localizing the UI toolkit is easy, between brackets, because it was an awful lot of work with regular expressions. However, we are saved by Qt and KDE Xtrasy make modules to glue the translation files. But this leaves the parser, or in plain terms, how do we localize a library that doesn't use Qt? You can achieve this by with two alternatives. The first, you can con and L update one of the Qt translation tools by deploying your own, your own translation macros. By this, you can extract the messages, you can later apply the translation from the UI toolkit side. Parameters, example, a given function here called a set has no definition. You can probably interpolate this little part in the UI, but if you're going this path, you can go uh, and do something better. What I chose to do uh, for JSOC was to refactor the whole library into error codes with a parameter payload. This means that whenever the parser has an error, it emits an error code with a parameter payload which is, which is later taken by the UL toolkit. Since the UL toolkit is translated thanks to Qt and Ecstasy make modules, this means that host, host applications are now responsible for performing the interpolation of the message with the supply payload. Incidentally, this internationalization effort also brings safety improvements. In the left, 
you can have the you can see the code verbatim from the original CS code parser. This is the example that applies when there is a syntax syntax error or the parser gets an end of expression. You can see that it, this is manually created and then copied is using a C function called SNPrintf. On the right, here you can have a look at how I did it in my project. It is vastly simplified with just an error code, and then the UI library has the uh, responsibility to interpolate it using C++ strings. We are finally at the last section, which deals with how CS4 handles FEMI. By FEMI, I mean that CS4 should respect the application team styling and preferences, which means both the user preferences, preferences as well as the platform conventions. In the example below, you see that Disney did not follow this as the original widget are heavily compressed and do not follow the GNOME's convention. In the right, you can see an alpha version of my work also taken in Genome, but you'll see that the controls are now much more usable in terms of office space and visibility. As demonstrated previously, controls were completely restyled to follow the host application's framing. This involved decompressing all fields or labels or placing what text or icons are shown. Also, uh, upgrading buttons and layouts to modern alternatives, in particular, queue from layout and Twitter button. Improving contracts in syntax, uh, syntax highlighting with a big, big thank you to Agatha for her suggestions. And enable color selections for vector variables. This actually was a hidden feature which was broken in Disney release and was uncovered when I did the, the, the compression work, which means there are now two ways to specify colors by clicking on the variable label or by moving the slider beneath each ch channel's input box. And finally, I fix the help tooltips to make it fully accessible. Yeah. At this point, I'd like to public it, uh, publicly thank Bottle and Hubble. Agatha and David Reboy for suggesting many of these improvements. As you may expect from this kind of, of work, these changes uncover additional mistakes in the developer side of things. I fixed two hidden crashes on CXPert that were hidden by the original styling, a buffer underflow when editing color gradients, as well as initializing memory accesses in vector widgets. And as a bonus track, these timing changes enable users to use CX for widgets directly with Qt Creator. So, for future improvements, are there any bits that I would like to tackle after GSOC? Yes. A first one, modernize the code base for to C11, which brings, as I said before, safety improvements. I would like to fully replace ScanF or HF with STL alternatives, as well as complete the cleanup of headers into separate files. There is a plugin subsystem that I have not been able to disable yet. I would like to do so and also see if I can implement this functionality for Windows in a safe way. To make a CMake at the configuration step, how to fix these pre-generated parser files, because at this point, they still use the, the build folder that it was used at Disney. And finally, research if this work could be, could be made upstream, which is complicated because of the license requirements of the translation teams, and also additional fixes, fixes as suggested by, by users whenever we release Krita. So for a summary, we covered all, all problems that I found in the, during the development of this project and how CF was a pro, uh, converted from production to a truly cross-platform alternative. In case we wasn't obvious, this version has so many improvements that it's not directly compatible with the original from Disney animation. 
And all modifications are available at invent at invent.kde.org slash graphics slash cxpo. This concludes our journey and thank you. I'm now open to any questions.